Hello there folks, I'm Dan Brown from a sort of interest in life.com. You're joining me on board good old narrowboat Tilly and today you're joining me for another random Sunday chat and this time we're going to look at another random event and sort of period from my life as this isn't quite a proper childhood story of ridiculous hijinks and pretending to be a cat up a tree and goodness knows what else but this is going back a decade which I still cannot believe that it is now 10 years since I was 18 that's just it's too horrific to think about but going back to when I was in college and that's in the United Kingdom sense of the word I, I don't know if that's the American equivalent of high school basically ages 16 to 18 give or take so Basically, while I was there, as I was always a massive nerd and very much into Star Wars, I can, well, you can imagine that that was the point where broadband internet was just starting to come in and so places like schools and colleges were getting it and there was, I think that was still a time where I didn't know anybody who actually had broadband in their house and I mean that again that's a crazy thing to th that's a crazy thing to think about if I can get my words out considering that I've now got a phone just to my side and stuff that's connecting up and listening to podcasts and all that sort of stuff literally out here amidst a load of fields but because of that when I had proper broadband and at college obviously you can imagine we were like yeah we're doing work at the computers we're doing work at the computers and then funtrivia.com I'm not sure if that's still going but basically I got sidetracked into loads of stuff like that and would just be doing Lord of the Rings quizzes and Star Wars quizzes and stuff like that all the time but one of the things that sort of at that time became a big thing as well was eBay well certainly became a big thing to the people in my immediate circle of friends and some of us were old enough to have accounts some of us weren't because you had to be 18 and PayPal and all that stuff and I started an account and just for some reason started to have a look on there and think right what have I got that I can sell and I had a load of old Pokemon cards as you can probably imagine again being a massive nerd from back in the day and the amount that I had from school was just ridiculous and I remember, I don't know if I sold to like seven or basically around 10 cards for 54 quid. And it was the most incredible thing ever because you can imagine at that stage where nobody really used the internet properly before. And we'd never had broadband easily accessible. And then suddenly it was like, God, have you seen this eBay thing? You can just sell anything that you've got. So then that led to a load of us being like, what can we sell? What can we sell? Oh my goodness me, what have we got? What have we got? And that just led to me selling all sorts of stuff initially. And like I say, that first time that I sold just literally like not even a dozen Pokemon cards for 50 odd quid, it was just, there's real potential here. I've got to find something that I can sell desperately quickly. Right, what is it? And of course, I had loads of Star Wars figures being, as I say, a good proper old style nerd before the uh, sort of modern, oh yeah, it's trendy to be a nerd and a geek and all that sort of stuff. So you can imagine that as I'm looking for all these Star Wars figures that I've collected up over the last few years and then starting to try and see if I can find them on eBay and look and see a couple of them are actually worth, uh, well, quite a bit in those standards as somebody who'd never had any money uh, coming in from actual proper work or, or this mystical eBay thing. So as I looked at that, I was like, hang on, I could sell these figures that I've got collected and then use that money to buy more figures and then try and sell those on. And this was a time when car boot sales were still a big thing because eBay hadn't taken off and sort of started to destroy those sorts of markets where people would literally be, well, now you know, people are like, oh, can I sell this to somebody on Facebook? Oh, this looks like it might be worth a lot. I'll put that on eBay and then take everything else and all the junk and tat to a car boot sale to try and offload. And as well, just for anybody who might be unfamiliar with car boot sale, that's literally where you just turn up with a car put a table out in a big row of other people doing the same thing and try and sell all of your random bits and pieces that you might be selling. I'm sure that there's there must be all sorts of other equivalents and different names for that around the world but that's basically what it is. Um, basically a field where people are selling their things together. So that was something that in those early uh, days I was very much into and well just a random sort of Sunday thing a great British Sunday tradition of going off to the car boot sale at Chirk or going off here or sometimes going off to like a big super one that every now and then would happen on bank holidays and things like that 
And uh, because of that, I obviously always kept my eye out for things like Star Wars figures and so on to pick them up just to add to my collection. But when it suddenly became a potential thing of, wow, hang on, I can take this money and then go and try and get them cheaper at a car boot sale, know roughly what they might be worth online, and then take them and sell them there and then do it all over again, that started the incredible cycle, which it did go on probably until I must have been about 20 or 20, I think it was, when I finally stopped doing that and actually got a proper real job. But it was that period of my life where it was because of the internet starting to uh, become its own sort of, wow, look at this. This is absolutely amazing. You've got broadband internet, you've got people doing YouTube videos and all that sort of stuff, which I didn't have even after I left college. I quite literally didn't have broadband internet until I think another year or so and it was the year of the internet that it was cheaper to use it after six o'clock or you could sometimes get it on a deal for like six quid a month or seven quid a month and uh, my nan and granddad had the internet on one of those deals it wasn't broadband or anything like that but because they didn't have the internet their um, phone provider gave them the opportunity to have it really cheap basically just to get them to start paying more money for it so that was something that I was like oh yes right I'll have that and then it'll be cheaper than using it at my mum's house so that led to this great period where every day I would go over to my nan and granddad's house in the morning see what all the orders were and what I'd sold and then go back to my mum's house have all of the me stock and all these bits and pieces all sorts of old Star Wars figures and all the little weapons just endless amounts of stuff and then package them all up and walk down to the post office down uh, maybe about three quarters of a mile away down a road and that period of my life was just so bizarre it was so good and it was at the same time like awful and I could never go back to it and really as I'm just about to have a little drink here I'll start this section of the video with great gusto in just a second so this couple of years I basically spent treading water and not really making huge progress I would do enough and make enough money to sort of keep going on and not really make a fortune but basically keep myself endlessly being able to buy consoles and games and all that sort of stuff which at the time was obviously like oh yeah look at this getting money and doing all this sort of stuff and I knew the potential was there if I tried to make it big that it could definitely go big but I never quite really got to that point where I was like this is what I want to do and again this ties into what I've said in the past of my entire life has been utterly aimless and I've never really had a vision or a thought of God, this is what I want to be, this is what I want to happen in the future, this is what I want to do right now and that sort of period of time really sums it up and it was a real period where I was proper obsessed with games and computer games and I can't explain to you how many hours and how much money like literally you must have spent like I don't know if it's like about two grand in one year just on games for and obviously consoles and stuff. And again, it was like all of the money that I was getting in, it was like, God, yeah, I'll have that, I'll have that, I'll have that, I'll have that. And it was just like spend, spend, spend. Again, in that inherent, that like, God, what's this? My parents are telling me to be more sensible. No way, this is awesome. Money and that ridiculous sort of thing that I think a lot of people might go through or perhaps I'm just trying to include as many people in my ridiculous childhood ways um, as I possibly can. But basically, it was just that crazy time of, wow, this is great. And this is literally as easy a thing as I can ask for. And as I've always been somebody who's shied away from people and crowds and direct interactions and stuff like that, it was like, look at this, I've literally got basically a shop, but I don't have to ever deal with people face to face. And there's all these people who were coming back and buying more and more stuff. And it was, it really was fantastic. And I set up a little sort of trade deal with somebody in America who I'd buy a regular order of bits and pieces and Star Wars paraphernalia off. And so I'd get it at a discount and then I'd sell it all over in like the UK and ship stuff in and out of Europe. And like I say, it makes it sound like a huge concern when I talk about it like that. But it really wasn't. It was, well, I like to say, I mean, I literally couldn't even imagine at this stage what it was or wasn't like. But basically, it was just enough. And certainly at that period of my life, it was just enough for what I wanted. And ultimately, though, 
one of the things that really brought it to an end and stopped it going big was not just my sort of obsession with anything else and playing games and even back then I was writing and I wrote like I don't know I'll fish it out someday and we'll have a flick through it but even back when I was in college, I wrote about, I don't know, I've said in these videos before, it's like I've got like 45 or 65,000 words actually written and on literally floppy disks now, but I've got loads of an actual handwritten manuscript of this story that I was writing. Again, though, that's, there's, there's so many things that are popping into my head as I'm talking about this period of my life. And again, I was obsessed with Lord of the Rings at that point. And it's also a time of my life where... I think it's something that went on to really influence me that because I had all this free time because I was just doing whatever I wanted as and when I wanted basically and because I was just about making enough money I could sort of keep getting away with it but I had all this time and I started to really get into Buddhism and it was that sort of thing of it's not a religion and there's all these different uh, strands of it but there's this basic sort of concept of like being happy in the moment being happy with what you've got which I think more and more well I don't know if it says it on Facebook these days but I had Taoist listed as my religion with not a very good one though as a sort of disclaimer and again it's all about this idea of like flowing around problems and not sort of wanting stuff wildly in the future and trying to be happy with what you've got in the moment and well again that's a completely different debate and video to do which we might get around to sometime um, but it's all that sort of basic thing of there's so many influences that crept into my life in that time as like a really impressionable young adult because I had the actual time to dedicate to really learning about it. And I remember I had, I had various books and things like that that you might see in the background still of some of my um, reviews and videos that I do at me mum's house. Um, on the bookshelf, you might well see things like the Dharmapada and Thich Nhat Hans, various books and so on. And it's all, again, that bizarre thing of I never would have imagined at the time that, oh, look at this, big influences and so on. But looking at it now it probably has had more of an effect than I had anticipated and realised but what it was that made me have to stop doing it ultimately wasn't the fact that I was never really going to have the real go and the real drive to try and make it big because I sort of knew that at its absolute heart it wasn't what I wanted to be doing it was something that I enjoyed doing and liked doing and having the opportunity to do but I thought, you know what, something's not quite right here. And what that basically was, I think, is summed up pretty much by the fact that I had, like, one friend and then other people that I would randomly bump into around town. And as you can probably gather, I like to do a lot of talking. But I have a very small group of friends even now uh, who are, like, proper sort of close friends. And at least two of them have been on the boat today as I'm recording this. But when it comes to the actual sort of... Uh, just general human interaction I was having zero it'd be like my family and then once a week my friend who was also at one of the unis who he would bus in and out to and so on and I might sometimes bus out with him and spend the day going around the uh, town there and then when he finished work we'd go back home and so on but that was literally it now, even though I I can't say I'm the greatest person for like, oh yeah, let's get in the midst of the party and the crowd, and I, I can't think of much worse these days than having to go and like interact with strangers at great length in like a bizarre social environment or something like that. <laughs> and I say bizarre social environment, I mean any normal pub, club, or any other place such as that. But really, it's like because I had basically zero. I was like growing sort of more and more reclusive and less and less like I would ever be normal which as once again now that I'm stood on a boat in the middle of nowhere with nobody around for miles that's it gotta pretty much be said that yeah perhaps um perhaps I didn't quite make that normal um uh, and very social being mark after all but ultimately it was that that was the real killer that I literally just didn't know anybody, didn't know anybody my own age really and that's the that was the ultimate sort of nail in the coffin of the whole eBay experience but I've got to say that if I had the chance to go back and live that period again I think I would probably do it in a heartbeat 
but I would have to make sure that I actually went out and had proper friends and stuff and tried to get even maybe some of those on board. Now, it's impossible to go back to that area. And believe me, in the past years before I had a boat, I tried. But because everybody cottoned on, the market got absolutely flooded and crowded for Star Wars figures and so on. And it's not the world's biggest market, as you can imagine. Like Star Wars figures from the late to mid ninety or mid to late nineties and Star Wars figures from nineteen seventy seven through to eighty five. <laughs> There's only a certain amount of people who are interested in them. But really as I say, I just wanted to generally talk and relive some of those experiences and this reminded me of a lot of other things that I could probably talk about in these videos that might be far more interesting. But as I say, the ultimate lesson learned was, as much as I can say now that I'm not a people person in terms of getting out there and sort of being proper, oh yeah, everybody party on the boat and so on, but what I definitely know is that I am not a total and utter recluse. And for example, it's stuff like YouTube in those early days of, I think, was it 2000 and 2005? Then 2006 was the first time I ever did anything on YouTube. And it would literally be years upon years upon years before I ever actually appeared on camera in a video. And even then it was the most awkward thing ever. So on that note, I am going to say... Please stay tuned because I'll see if I can fish out some of my old YouTube videos that aren't actually online and aren't, were never part of this channel. Anyway though, on that note, I will definitely now say thank you very much for watching. Feel free to check out my other videos for loads of boaty bits and biking and the great outdoors and nothing really else to do with Star Wars whatsoever. Feel free to, of course, uh, add me personally on Facebook and Twitter or like the Facebook page, all of those good things. And of course, check out my books available for the Kindle. Search Amazon for The Narrowboat Lad. Find links to everything just mentioned and more in the description below. And until the next time, have an absolutely fantastic day. Keep it Boba Fett worthy, keep it boat worthy and farewell.